Hello all, welcome to Uncommon Geeks, myself Vasant. I hope you are all doing well. Today's topic is Pure Functions. Pure Function is considered to be one of the fundamental topic of all the programming language, same as JavaScript. Due to its simplicity, many candidates tend to ignore this topic during the interview preparation. It's a fact that Pure Functions are straightforward, but there can be small variations of Pure Function that can be created, that candidates tend to confuse during the interview and they'll not be able to answer it. So to solve this problem, I'm, I picked the pure functions in my series and I'll be asking you all the possible questions that can be asked in the interview and how easily you can tackle it. I'll guarantee you, you'll be thrilled to know the variation of pure functions that can be formed, whether you are a beginner or a candidate who would take an interview and were unable to answer pure functions, you'll definitely enjoy this video series. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get started. Let us understand what are pure functions with a simple example. Okay, so let me create a function. Function area of uh, rectangle. It takes two arguments: length and width. Okay, so what it returns is length star width. Okay, so basically quite straightforward. Whoever has read the geometry are fundamentally aware of this concept where area of a rectangle is length into width or breadth, okay? So now I'll call this function from the outside. So I'll insert the log statement itself. So area of rectangle, I'm passing 10 into 20, okay? So let's see what is the output. There is nothing fancy here. You would get 200. 20 tens are is 200. 20 into 10 is 200. So you're getting 200, okay? So no matter how many time you invoke the function with passing the same set of arguments, so you're getting same value as output, okay? If you change the value, so 30 into 40, 40, 30, obviously the values are gonna change, okay? So, but for the same given set of values, the function will always return same value. So no matter how many times you invo in call the area of rectangle with 10 and 20, you're always gonna get the same, uh, uh, same uh, area, okay? So pure functions in very simple words, we can tell this are those function, those functions that are deterministic in nature. Okay. So these are the functions where you, you can, you can be so sure if I call this function, this is the output that I'm going to get. So that's about the pure functions. Okay. So the concept is same uh, concept is straightforward. You call a function and uh, you anticipate an output and you always get the same output. The, those are the pure functions. In fact, this is not specific to JavaScript. In all the programming languages, pure functions mean the same. Where for those functions that are deterministic, where if you pass the same set of values, you're always going to get the same set of values. So always you're going to return the same set of outputs. Those are called as pure functions. Okay. So now there are, obviously there is an opposite type to this. Uh, and they're called impure functions. And some places they are also called as not pure functions. Okay, uh, both both the terms are uh, exist in the industry. People refer to uh, both. Okay, let's see uh, impure or the not pure functions. Hmm? Uh, let us uh, stick to some. Let's make it some test function. I must test because we no longer calculate the area of our rectangle. I'm making it test. You pass the length and width. Okay, what I'm doing here is const temp. I'm creating a temporary variable. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a mathematical math dot random or random variable basically. Okay. And I'm doing math dot floor. I'll explain why I'm doing that in a while. Okay. And let me know the same test again. Okay. And what I'm doing is along with the length and breadth, I'll also start the temp. Okay. So let me call the same function again. Uh, maybe let's call test where I'll pass 10 and 20, okay? Let me execute this. So we're getting zero, okay? I'm executing this again. We're getting zero two times. So what might be happening is, uh, temporary variable, whatever is getting generated, uh, maybe let's try to do it, multiply by 10, so that we get some higher number, okay? So basically what's happening here is, uh, before seeing the output, let me explain the block of code, whatever I've written. So math.random will generate a random number. Generally that number or by default that number will be in some decimals. 
okay so 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.4 something like that so i'm just in multiplying it into 10 so that it becomes a slightly a bigger number so 0 0.8 means it becomes 8 8.4 or something then i'm doing a math dot floor here math dot floor and math dot seal you might be already aware what it does is it will uh, increase the value or decrease the value so for example if you have a value like 0 0.4 math dot floor okay let's make it 1.4 Math dot floor. If you pass this inside math dot floor, it will become one. Uh, if you if if you pass it inside math dot seal, seal means as you know it's to the top, it will become two. So this is what the math dot floor and math dot seal functions do. I'm just using this because we we get the whole number rather having the points uh, in the decimals. Okay. So you're invoking now. Uh, now we are invoking the same function twice here. Same arguments are getting passed. Let's see the output. So once we got thousand eight hundred, second time we are getting thousand. If I call third time again, okay, so I'm getting a different value, 1000, 1800, 1400. So basically what's happening is 20 into 10 is same. In all the cases, length and length into width, the 20 into 10 is happening same. But the output that we are getting is different because of this temporary variable. So now you yourself know impure functions, impure functions, those functions that are non-deterministic in nature. Okay, so you will not be able to predict the output from a given function. If you are invoking it, you are not sure what value you are gonna get. It always varies. Okay, so this this example looks vague. Who is going to do like this? This example is something that may not exist all the time. Okay, in industry we may not get such kind of example. But think in in this way where you have some network call that you are making. Okay, so depending on what type of data you are getting. Sometimes you may not get a data, sometimes you may get a data and depending on the type of data you are getting, you are going to render, you, are, you will be rendering it. So those are the actions that are non-deterministic. So you are not sure. Let's say for example, user X will get some set of data, user Y will get some set of data. So the, whatever the data that you are getting may vary. Okay. Or user X may not get same set of data all the time. So depending on his location, he may get some offers and some location he may not get. Okay. So what is the, what will be returned from a function is non-deterministic. Okay, so this is a very important concept. Uh, that is the reason I'm touching it here. And there could be a lot of very interesting questions that can be asked in this simple concept. This looks very straightforward and very simple, but slightly tweaking it will make it a very complicated during the interview. So those questions I'll be discussing in next video. If you have liked my video, please like it. And uh, if you if you uh, if you want your friends also to learn from this video, please share it with them. Also subscribe to our channel. And in case you want me to make video on a particular topic, please do mention that in the comment section. I'll make a video on that. Catch you in next video with very interesting questions on pure and impure functions. Thank you all.